turn it over to John for a few minutes here. So, John, if you're ready. Okay. You well, can, uh, you can kick it off. All righty, Nick. Uh, uh, welcome. My screen while you talk. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank you, Nick, for joining us tonight. Um, you've been a member of the band family for well over 25 years and uh, actually were one of the first three members of the band family. And over that time, you have um, provided us with a lot of support, with wisdom, with financial support, with uh, counsel and friendship. And we are certainly grateful for that. Now you are embarking on a new venture and we wanted to say thank you and uh, for all you've done and to wish you well in your new venture. Um, we have a few things for you. Uh, the first is a lifetime membership in the Primetime Band. And there's a, there will be a certificate that is somewhat similar to the ABCD award. Um, this, uh, this membership though is more than just a uh, a uh, plaque to put on your wall. It comes with some significant uh, other benefits. The first is a pair of complimentary tickets to each of our upcoming concerts. <laughs> and you may, uh, you may ask, you know, what is that worth? And I could uh, answer that in one word, priceless. <laughs> uh, you are also, with those tickets, you are given uh, VIP seating. And in fact, you can have any seats in the auditorium you want if you come early enough. <laughs> we, uh, the second thing you're going to be, uh, we're making you an honorary member of our board of directors. And uh, with that, you have the opportunity to come to any board meeting you would like. Uh, what? Third, what? Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> thirdly, thirdly, uh, John Calder has put together a very nice tribute for you on the Primetime Band uh, website. And uh, you find it under the Founders page about in the, I think it's in the About section on the band. Uh, and it is, it's very nice. And lastly, and more seriously, uh, to help further your uh, Endeavor up in Crescent City. We wanted to uh, contribute to that, and so we will be cutting a check for a thousand dollars in the near future and sending that up to the uh, foundation in Crescent City. So we are going to miss you. Uh, you have uh, been, you know, kind of the glue that has held the band together over many years. And uh, I was thinking that you're sorry, you and Van are sort of the corporate memory for the band in terms of uh, how the band was put together and all the different uh, stages that we have gone through. You've been one of the consistent pieces there and we appreciate that. And those of us that have been on the boards have seen it even more than perhaps some others, but uh, we're gonna miss you, but uh, we are very impressed and with you and with Lisa's uh, commitment to the Crescent City community and to the kids up there and we just wish you the best so <clears throat> excuse me I am humbled by the gift and the recognition uh, all of it unexpected um, a heart full of gratitude if I had to do it all over again I would have done exactly the same thing it uh, has just been so exciting to have had the career I had in Santa Barbara and to be able to help so many people and this wonderful group that came to be because Nam saw a part of society that wasn't being served that would want to be served and we were able to participate through the efforts of George Pendergast and Van and myself by forming the group here and then watching it grow and in my own case mostly hiding behind the curtain where I'm quite comfortable peeking out once in a while and uh, coming to concerts but doing everything that I could behind the scenes to help the group it's uh, these are memories that I simply won't forget so 
the the recognition and um, the check, the um, just this opportunity to see faces today. It's it's uh, I can't express my gratitude uh, as much as I would like. And uh, Lisa is downstairs. I'm upstairs, uh, but. I can hear her in the background saying, send them my love too. So uh, our love to all of you. We are up here in Crescent City now, have a house on the river where I grew up. Uh, we, we love it here. I just got back from a four mile walk along the river and we have our shirt sleeves rolled up and are starting to do some very serious work, uh, making hires for project managers, strategic planners, capital campaign fund people so that uh, we can move forward on building this performing arts center up here. So that's the only thing on our bucket list. We only have one thing left here and uh, we, uh, we are able to do this in one sense because of the opportunities we were given to serve the public, the musicians down in Santa Barbara for the better part of 50 years. You know, the things we learn along the way, the skills we pick up, um, the lessons we learn on how much fun it is to give uh, all put us in a good position to continue helping the people up here. So um, good to see you all. Thank you once again. And we will be down from time to time. We'll surprise you. I'll poke my, uh, poke my head out from behind the curtain once or twice again. Uh, okay. Best efforts, you haven't seen the last of us yet. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nick. Um, while you were speaking, uh, um, Barb put up the picture of the uh, award that uh, will be printed out and framed and mailed to you. So you'll uh, have it for your wall or wherever you would like to have it. Wonderful. And uh, I just finished uh, having a nice large workbench built in the garage here. Uh, good state-of-the-art workbench. And I'll be doing uh, repairs for free for the district and for the kids. And uh, looking forward to doing that. So life goes on. Some things change, other things don't. Can't take yeah. me away from the bench. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you once again. This is, well, this thank, is, uh, thank you. This is thank beyond you. honorable certainly unexpected, and I am grateful. Thank you. Thank you. I see that we've got Van and Lorraine visiting too, so uh, thank. nice to see you guys. <laughs> well, wonderful, and uh, hopefully... Yeah, floor, is, floor is open for anybody else that wanted to comment. Yeah, just unmute yourself. Nick, Nick Al Hansen here. I uh, stopped by your uh, Agora place today. And uh, I gave him a link to this uh, Zoom today. He, he's probably on here somewhere. So uh, he was aware of this tonight. Ah, okay. He, Great. He's, he's, he's going to post that on his on your face, Facebook page on your uh, website. Very good. So much for hiding behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> Not around here. Oh. Nick. Uh, hey, Nick. Nick, I have a question. Oh, hold on, yeah. Mary Jane. Uh, Van is starting to the floor. Tell everybody where you're playing today, th these days, instruments. You're not so, just, uh, some friends of mine that are the brass players I always dreamed of being. And one reason that I decided it'd be smart for me to get into another part of the music business, have a brass sextet up here. Two of them are Meredith Sedgwick's uh, sons. So Daniel Sedgwick plays tuba in this brass sextet and David plays, he's actually playing French horn now, but they asked me to join. And I said, you guys must be pretty darn smug because you're clearly at a level now where you have realized you need to take your musicianship down a notch, you know? Uh, <laughs> uh, because I literally haven't played seriously in a group for 50 years. <laughs> uh, I've tested instruments, I repair them, I can jack of all trades, master at none, play some of them, but I haven't sat down and seriously played for, for a half a century. So uh, I've been, I've joined their rehearsals and I'm playing cornet. Um, 
That certainly makes you the a prime candidate for a prime for a primetime ban or Indy Horizons ban. Yes, and, and I chose the cornet because the other guys are playing trumpet, and I figure the cornet's a little quieter. I, I have a little bit more margin for error there, and they won't catch me. So when I'm feeling a little more confident, I'll swap the cornet out for a trumpet. Nick? Um, we should give... Um, oh, okay. I think we should give Nick the opportunity to play in our band anytime he wants. <laughs> Uh, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Nick uh, Van is uh, speaking to you. Yes, uh, Lorraine and I want to thank you, Nick, for um, being the person that we needed, um, the three of us as, as the founding members. You know, George asked me and you know, about, and I was sold right away, but, but he said, and, and well, we talked right away, but we, I said, we need a third person. And that person is Nick Rail. Um, the group, it would never have happened for all of you on the screen here. It would never have happened without Nick. Uh, guiding us and and um, we had some meetings at open meetings at his um, Nick Real Music and <clears throat> he was just um, uh, I, I've known Nick for 50 plus years and I knew that um, <coughs> the success, it would be very successful if he was on the team. And um, I want to thank you, all of you, for being on, on the band, but especially Nick. Uh, we've, we've gone back together on a few other, well, I, I don't know about problems in the, in the city school uh, makeup and <clears throat> and where we go from there. And, and uh, Nick was always there. And the unbelievable input that he had uh, was, was priceless. Lorraine, you know, George um, left after about a year because George was really interested and making this, member Nick, he, he wanted to make this a business. Yes, we, he could, was. we could start bands all over California. And, uh, and I said, I'm only interested in one uh, place and that, that is Santa Barbara. Nick, I, I could see he was on the same track. But I wanna mention one other, we, the other person that we, I could never, and I don't think we could have been as successful, and that is Lorraine. Oh. Uh, she, what, what is, um, she calls herself a gopher, you know, <laughs> a gopher this and that, so, so um, but when <clears throat> I, I thought the three, really the four of us were equal members and uh, what a trip we've had, right? It's been wonderful. Are you gonna start a, a group up there, Nick? Well, I'm playing in a sextet on a cornet up here, a brass sextet, and there's a, a community jazz band that's trying to get me to join on tenor. We'll see how uh, much luck All they right. have there. Uh, it's wonderful to see both of you, Van and Lorraine. Lorraine, you're radiant, you're beautiful. Van, handsome, what a wonderful couple. And turning the tables on you, Van, a little bit, when we go back to the 1970s, when you were coming into LaGrangeur music, and I was a young kid who didn't know which way was up, long hair and a beard, 
And uh, not everybody knows this, but, you know, that's what my generation looked like back then. <laughs> Maybe uh, not quite as trustworthy as you might want to think by at first glance, but uh, you trusted me, you believed in me, you mentored me, and a lot of what I was able to achieve uh, came from your mentorship over the years. So um, another great example of what we get in life by giving. So great to see Great to see your faces. It's uh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. Nick, what did you do with your antique instruments? They're mostly sitting in my garage at the moment, and I'm trying to figure out what the next step is. I may uh, put a couple of them up inside the house here. They may end up in a um, display cases in the front of the uh, Performing Arts Center here to amuse people while they're waiting in line. Um, it's uh, probably about 150 instruments, mostly from the 19th century. And Oh my gosh. Some of them is interesting, some of them not quite so much, but all of them uh, 150. The, ear the earliest one goes back to 1760, so it's a, it's a uh, I, I love the collection because it's it reflects what happened during the Industrial Revolution, which for the primetime band, for any of us that play a, a brass or woodwind instrument that is chromatic, we pretty much owe it to what happened. We owe it to the, uh, the uh, Industrial Revolution. Without that, we would still be uh, playing very simple whistles and beating on drums and wouldn't be too much more except uh, vocals, of course. So uh, the uh, collection documents the progress of the uh, brass and woodwinds over the course of the uh, 19th century. So it's uh, great to show to kids and it might end up in uh, the Performing Arts Center. We'll see, stay tuned. In the meantime, I still have them so I can take one a month out and photograph it and uh, send some uh, graphs and, and story to Lou and uh, put it, have, uh, uh, hopefully entertain everyone in the uh, primetime newsletter. What's that? Where's the, where's the serpent? The serpent no, is in no, the garage no. at the moment, but I think I'm going to hang no it over the fireplace. We don't use meeting. the fireplace and uh, yeah, it looks it, pretty good. Um, I think that's going to move into the living room. So we're still in the final stages of, of unpacking everything and deciding where everything goes. So a little bit of a process when you don't move for uh, decades and decades. You're, you're reminded of how much you have and all that sort of stuff. So we're still in the middle of that process a little bit. I'm going to go a little, a little more about the Performing Arts Center. Well, the county here was doing okay in the 1950s. Communities in general were doing well, the, the prosperity after the war. Uh, but as time went on and the logging industry and the fishing industry went south, uh, the county here now is one of the most impoverished in the state. It's number three, four, two, depending upon the year. Um, wonderful band directors here, led by Dan Sedgwick, Meredith's oldest son. And he really is a very, very fine band director. I can measure him against any of the hundreds of school districts, uh, high schools we worked with in Southern California. He's right there. <clears throat> the kids are good because the kids are good everywhere. The Performing Arts Center, the, um, the whole county, the best place to perform, the largest venue now is a middle school stage that was old when I performed on it. <laughs> and <laughs> um, Lisa and I just last August replaced the lighting on the stage at this middle school stage um, 
were about five lights left, and it wasn't a question of whether they'd go out during a performance. It was how many and when. And everybody was bringing in their own lighting and then taking it back home again for performances. It's a small stage, and it's, it's in poor repair. A high school band won't fit on it. The electrical panel dated it back to 1929. That gives you an idea. So the Performing Arts Center that we want to build is about a $20 million project. It will be adjacent to the band room at the high school and hold plus or minus 800 people. The uh, school has donated the land for this. Um, we cannot raise any significant money in the county because if it county had money, they could do it. They simply don't have a lot of money. So some people will contribute this, that, and the other thing to it, but mostly we have to hire uh, are in the process already of hiring and we'll hire other people to work on capital campaigns with uh, state and federal grants, um, things of that nature and, and go after uh, donors of that sort. Um, Lisa and I have already pledged, uh, well, when we sold the business, we pledged the entire proceeds of the business to performing arts and public education in Del Norte County. We felt very good about all the work we've done in Southern California and decided another county that had fewer resources uh, was where we would like to give our attention where this is the county that gave me my start in 1959 when I, my parents let me join band and I, I got a cornet and uh, it all started there. Um, so we have publicly pledged a million dollars to start the capital campaign and all that will be spent before the first shovel full of dirt is, is shoveled. It takes that much to grease the wheels to get something like this rolling. Um, but parallel to the project of the Performing Arts Center, we're also doing these other projects like the lighting at the junior high school and we bought 100 instruments for them last year, brand new instruments for the entire district. We'll buy several hundred more. There are a number of different projects like this so that um, the district up here can have <clears throat> some of the opportunities that kids down south have. I look at the worst, poorest um, districts in Southern California and they have more than the kids up here. So it's, uh, yeah. I'm trying to solve the disparity of the parity, that's what I call it, and move the needle a little bit. This, these kids are just as good as any other kids and they deserve the same opportunities. So uh, we're gonna do our best up here. We're gonna give it one heck of a push. And uh, the thousand dollars, that will go a long way. That's a big help. You know, it's uh, um, a, a very nice surprise. So I think the Performing Arts Center overall, the project, I tell everybody, tick tock, tick tock, I'm 70. Uh, I can't spend 15 to 20 years to see this thing get built. We wanna uh, see if we can do it in five to 10 and the closer to five we can get the better. So um, that's why we're investing money in project managers and strategic managers and uh, people that are already familiar with state and federal grant writing and so forth. So it's an exciting project. You know, I, uh, I was excited every day I got to go to work instead of had to go to work with Nick Real Music. <laughs> that was wonderful. And uh, now with this one thing on our bucket list, I, I still get to go to work. Life is great. <laughs> Thank you for the interest. <laughs> forward to hearing more about it as time goes on. Sorry, Lee. Looking forward to hearing more about it as time goes on. Yes, I will keep everyone updated. I would love to do that. It's a it's a fun adventure. I I realized fairly early on that well I have the um the privilege along with my wife of being able to start this project. I'm certainly not the one to run it. I don't know anything about capital campaigns. Uh, so the team that we form up here, once we have everybody in place, hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll uh, 
pick up speed and uh, I'll be able to report on a, a fairly regular basis on the progress we're making. And Lisa and I will be down in Santa Barbara on occasion, once, twice a year. Uh, we plan to come down and spend two, three, four days and uh, certainly hope to be able to see some of you at that time. Who knows, it might even coincide with a primetime band concert, I hope so. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> be nice to get back to that. If things ever get back to normal and you get your uh, thing built, you should send some buses down here for the prime time band. Bus us all up for the first performance of the building. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Road trip. Road trip. Yeah. Yeah.